Um, okay. Uh, and I did, Nate, did you notice that, uh, did Lucy? Yeah, uh, I thought she said yes. Mm -hmm. I, uh, mm -hmm. I thought she said she was available. So maybe, she, yeah. maybe she'll join in, in a minute. Um, but uh, good news. Thanks to Lori. We've, the, the, uh, the minor issue in the model has already been fixed in the last 15 minutes, so. Yeah. Yeah, Zach just put an extra zero. So it's interesting, every month I send him an asset list, he's updating what we're, what we're doing in 24 and, you know, what's going back and forth. So eventually we'll have to say, you know, stop changing the number in the base case, you know? Yes, and right then pick a scenario to go with for him to make those edits. Cause he keeps sending spreadsheets. I have like six of them now um, as we make changes and finalize, you know, little projects that we're doing. So just to well, know. As I, as I said on my note, I don't want to spend a ton of time on the asset schedule. I did have a question though, right? Mm -hmm. Is So like, as we go through 2024 and we do, projects like so i'll just give a simple example we've already decided we have in in the wheels moving in the process of getting jason a couple of those mm -hmm. equipment parts right is that does that i was a little unclear on the meeting with club benchmarking does that get updated kind of on the fly every mm -hmm. month or does it happen at the end of the year how does that work no yeah that's what he's doing updating so um yeah. I, I had sent him the list for March saying, you know, we did the locker room work and the pro shop things. And um, he took copies of the invoices and then added those items into our 24 spreadsheet. So the most okay. recent that I have is that million two thirty three number for projects, you know, spent to be spent and spent this year. So every time we do something like that, and, and so let's just use those carts as as an example, you know, I'll just say they were combined forty thousand. I forget exactly, but if they, um, so the, uh, our the capital available, I suppose, source would go down forty thousand, and but it would also knock forty thousand dollars off of the scheduled expenditures. Right, right. It would be. Now, I think we should probably, uh, well, we'll probably get into when we figure out different um, strategies and scenarios that we will probably have a different number in there. And then that number should include the 40,000 that we're spending. Okay. So, so looking at it more as a, what are we spending number, I think is what they show. Um, yeah. Good. And, but yeah, doing it every good. month is Zach, as soon as an AFE is done and approved, it gets added to my asset addition spreadsheet that we keep track of for our audit. Mm -hmm. um, so that's when I'm sending him that every month also. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. okay. Lori, why don't we, the, oh, by the way, Nate and Lori did. Mm -hmm. So Lori, obviously we, ex we exchanged several texts, but did mm -hmm. like what I proposed to discuss, does that make sense to both, to the both of you? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Yep, I okay. got some answers. And I talked okay. to Chris about the initiation stuff. So okay. all good. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So sounds good. Let's jump in. Okay. Hey guys, so Sam, I have one question. If if we mm -hmm. uh if we have something on the 2024 and we don't do it, that does that automatically go to 2025 with with some kind of asterisk or something? <laughs> I don't think automatically. I think we will just have to continue to discuss. Why didn't okay. we do it in 24? Was it funds? I, I think in different scenarios, when we move forward, like Dan kind of mentioned in his email, we're going to have to say um, some of these things are not getting done. We already know that. So at some point in time, we're going to change this base and make it look different. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Does everyone see the right screen? I have two screens at home. I just, are you seeing the yes. club benchmark? Yeah. Okay. Yes, we are. Okay. We're seeing the, um, the just the strategy profile. We're, okay. Okay. Which is great, actually. Even before we go to the uh, to the uh, the projection tab, just to show. So this is just like the almost like your profile obviously. summary. Yeah, yeah. One of the things we worked on with Chris um, walked him through like our full zeros and trying to determine 
they weren't in our account before. So our funding has changed. I, I think our FME was um, a lot less, but you have to include the full zeros in it. Their funding is more also that FME or recognizes 318, that's because of socials. And when we report our FME, it's only on golfing, like at board meetings and things like that. So um, so anyways, we made a new membership category to include full zeros because they only pay nine months out of the year. So we oh, did the great. prorations and stuff. So Nate and I both agree that that FME number is correct as how we stood January when we came into the year is what it looks like. Perfect. Okay. So. Oh, well, actually for, for the club benchmarking in this model purposes, socials count as what? Point one? Point one. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so anybody questions on that? Nope, okay. Um, oh, hey, know. Lori, yeah. if you don't mind, why don't we go to the bottom first, yeah, sure. sort of, and then sort of work our way backwards? Which one? People will, oh, this I'm one? sorry, go on, yeah, go on, go straight there so that okay. everyone sees. So essentially, all of the tabs yeah. on the left match yeah, sure. up for each of these categories, right? Yeah, yeah. yep, so beginning cash. We updated that from our last call. And then we just took out the whole Tim sell thing. It was too complicated. In the end, hopefully we have enough revenue and operating that we're sending 100% of the I fees received um, to capital. Um, so we just took that out because we bear that Tim's expense operationally. And yeah. if we send 100% of our I fees over, it really is a net effect to capital, right? So um, okay. that's one of the changes we made. And then um, our dues increase is in there correctly. Yep, I, I did that after our last call. And then you can see this is our 1.2 um, to spend. So we're really not... Um, we're ending cash capital 100K. So we're not negative. And we're not going to spend the 1.2 because we're not going to buy. I mean, right away, you could take some of those leases off the top. We're not going to outright buy $500,000 in lease. I don't have the right. number in front of me exactly what it was, but mm -hmm. um, it was pretty high. We're not going to buy all that equipment. We could potentially see some leases coming up over the next few months, um, but that's operational. So can I ask a question here? Mm -hmm. We're showing 100% of the capital expenditure is obligatory and we know that's not the way it's right. going to happen. Yep. So is that matter at this time or will we mm -hmm. break that out as we decide which projects go forward? Yeah. Now, on the base case, we're going to keep aspirational out. So the next scenario or strategy will have aspirational just okay. because just because that that's where you make your changes in your variables. So if you say okay. initiation fees need to be 25,000 now in order to fund this or capital dues need to be 175 or we need to take a loan or we need to do an assessment because these are the things that we want to do. That's when you start messing and changing variables. So if that, if that makes know, Lori, sense. So, you know, mm -hmm. that you, I think you did a good job of describing that. And that all that obviously that answers the uh, the question that I had regarding that. So yeah. the um, and, and I would I assume tell me if I'm correct or not. When we start through the strategy scenarios and and as you as you say, start um, playing with all the, the different variables, we mm -hmm. can save. I hope um, I won't say an infinite infinite number, but if like if we had so I'll, I'll just say five different things so mm -hmm. that so that people could be on the same page as far as you know what was what was changed and then you would name them and and so on as as opposed to a constantly be being moving. Can we save multiple strategy versions? Yeah. Is really my question. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. So just as a a uh, word we've used in the past is deferred maintenance. 
Would obligatory capital investment roughly relate to if we spent 1.2 this year, we are meeting our deferred maintenance kind of a program? Yeah. And then right. next, mm -hmm. next year, we would have 886. If we spent that, would we say we're our deferred maintenance is essentially caught up? For that, as we at are that current the, year, yeah. For the, for the useful life that they're forecasting. So this is what they are thinking for whatever item it is that we need to replace that with. Okay. And, and, and Gary, I think, you know, since... Certainly, that's I think kind of one of our goals, right? So that um, it, it, it's a good point you're making. So that so that we know, you know, like let's just say we push. I'll just pick a number: three hundred thousand of obligatory for twenty twenty four, and we push that to twenty twenty five or beyond, right? So then, essentially, we know, you know, how much of the deferred maintenance is sort of of. Uh, Essentially, how much in arrears are we, right? We kind of know if we push 300 back, we know that we we have a 1.1 or 1.2 million coming up in 2025, but we don't know how much of it is kind of deferred, I guess. We know this is what we need to spend to maintain our assets, but if we keep pushing back, do we have any recognition of what's kind of we're on borrowed time, if that makes sense? Yeah, those items would just that would just be the tracking of the asset list. So we would know where we're behind and what needs to happen. I think that asset we just have to accept that the asset list like is constantly changing. Yep. And in, in, and Nate's right. It's per their life of what they think. Something could break tomorrow and it moves from 26 to 24, you know? So yeah. um, we, we just kind of have to go off their assumptions for the timing of it. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so Lori, so I just wanted to give everyone yeah. sort of like a snapshot of this and just mm -hmm. so that people could see each of the things you see in bold here are, are, the, are essentially the tabs that Lori is now going to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Us. Yeah. Um, so this is our, um, you know, breakdown of the member pricing. You can see the full zeros that we added. That's that equates to twelve months of dues. That's what they would pay. You know, because this is like a a twelve month picture. Um, so I know he's going to say in our scenarios, this is what we could talk about to cover our shortfalls. Um, should we add? five more full members or have a 8% increase in dues or things like that. Um, dues don't really matter as much, I guess, but, um, or initiation fees. So that one's pretty straightforward. Is there, uh, if we're going to do something like that, is there a way for us to project how much our cap, our monthly capital dues needs to increase yeah. incrementally to catch up with our obligatory. Yeah, so I think that would probably be scenario one to say, okay, if we started in 2025 collecting $175, that's just a number I picked um, every month. How does that put us out to that year, whatever it is, 2026 mm -hmm. or eight, where we're spending a lot of money or they project us to spend a lot of money? How much money does that give us? What should we be saving? Or or more relatable, maybe, what if in the next six months we do the land and what kind of cash flow do we need for that to develop it or something like that? So yeah. I think that's straight scenario where we could mess with two things, initiation fee or capital dues, right? Um. Oh, that was that one. Okay. Operational ledger. I don't know what this is. We haven't ever looked at it. We haven't touched that yet, doesn't... but I think if we go through our 2024 budget, we could plug some numbers in there. I don't really know why. What? Yeah. So, Lloyd, maybe I for the next find meeting, out... 
the, for, uh, for the next meeting, kind of better understand the uh, the the purpose of this. To to your point, Lori, is that basically um, we've already account uh, accounted for our expected or our budgeted yeah. um, operating surplus by saying we're going to move a hundred percent of initiation. So it, I, it seems to me this um, this <clears throat> tab would be kind of a moot point. Mm -hmm. unless you projected either a big um, deficit or a major surplus. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder if they're using it for some sort of percentages or something like, you know, your revenue comes too much from food and beverage or whatever, you know, or something like that, or you're covering too much of a loss. I don't know. I don't know why they would okay. really use it, but I'll ask Chris. Okay. That's great. It, yeah. it is uh, inter it, interesting because uh, Nate, just submitted a data sheet for a, a yacht. Hmm. <laughs> Got a lot of water out there. We'll yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's how we're going to enhance wonder, our weddings, right? Yeah, yeah. I just wonder if it, in one of our scenarios, if we're projecting a, uh, a growth in a capital project that we would use this to determine what kind of revenue we would have to generate to kind of do the justification or return on our investment. Yeah, just, I, Gary, that's really all on the capital mm -hmm. side, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's how you pay for it. But if we're saying we want to add pickleballs, uh, we actually can we actually do analysis to say we would generate enough revenue to spend that much money on the project. It's kind of a return on investment kind of consideration, possibly. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Mm hmm. Um. Cash flow from operations. Okay, so this is where they're assuming a dues increase. Um, again, operationally. Um, but with this comes out to zero. Any, are we projecting a percentage increase in the base case for our capital dues? No, are we at zero? not okay. in the base case. Mm -mm. Okay. That'll be one of the things we do in the one of the strategy models, Gary. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And and this is just operationally again. So they must, yeah, <clears throat> something. They must be thinking about, yeah. I know they focus a lot on how much do your dues cover your um, percentage of revenue and covering the club because that's where they believe the money should be, you know? So um, this one probably a little better. Okay, so we have everything listed per category, what they're paying to get in. And then like his number is in and out, um, just went off our budget. So 14 potentially new in, 14 out. You know, I'm, how we hold to our FME through the year per our budget, we'll know it at the end if it matters or not, you know, like if it um, if it really matched up. But again, I mean, this is just a, spreadsheet well, scenario although i have to say though really um frankly even pre-nate uh as far as that for for men for several years we've actually done a good job projecting via the budget the number of ins and outs so i would i think like the uh i think Lori, like we have we, you know very good data on this and so yeah. Like I, I feel pretty comfortable with the with, with those numbers. Yeah, yeah, me too. Because it's definitely one of the items in here that it is a projection. Like it's not an actual number. Like it's not the operating dues, and you know they're going up by four percent, right? So yeah. But I, but I feel pretty good about that projection. Yeah. Are we are we uh, assuming a different ins and outs for each category membership class? Um, yeah, yeah, per our budget. Yeah. So it's like 14 full, maybe <laughs> five juniors or whatever, however that goes in. Well, well, it basically really is, holds the membership count through the year. Yeah. I mean, Lori, it's really, it's really golf members as far as, because yeah. the social members from a, even from a budget standpoint, will really only have a minimal uh, impact. Yep. Okay. Yep. For sure. Um, 
Well, well, go back, go back there for a second. So okay. let's just because I would like to say so. And so is this where it goes in? Is this where you built in the assumption as to how much, for example, the operating dues would go up each year or not? Or is that later? Operating dues, that was cash flow from operating right here. It's 3%. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So right now from an operating dues, you just have it built in as 3% going up 3% a year. Which again, I don't know, really know where that calculates in because yes, yeah, it's, it's operating. It doesn't okay. ever get to capital. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm with you. Initiation fees installments. This is just the part of do we have a few people who pay half and then half another six months later? Yes, but uh, it's a really, really small impact. Um, I don't know if we had three people last year, so it's, it's not a big impact for us. Um, our loan. They have our copier loan in here. Operational. Um and then also the portion of that remodel loan. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. That so would just didn't, flow. Lori, I was kind of surprised as far as that, and maybe they did in the discussions with you, as far as, I mean, obviously we're a small club, but still the amount of debt we have is really remarkably low compared to most clubs. Mm -hmm. I agree. Agree, and it's a pretty good interest rate. Um, but we have big ideas. Yeah. <laughs> Assessments, we don't have anything outstanding. I know they talked before, like it would make sense for us to say we're buying the land or developing that. It would make sense for us to borrow the funds and add a monthly assessment to the members to pay for that land instead of increasing dues and instead of increasing, I mean, it is a dues increase, but um, instead of saying, oh, okay, next month you owe us $5,000 each, you know, if it's something that we can get financing for and hold it over a longer term, we could also pass that cost to the members in the same way. So it's just breaking it out. It's just breaking mm -hmm. it out as to what it's going for, right? Yeah. Yep. Instead of having to say, here's a assessment all at once. Yeah. So, so but there is a downside though, Lori, as far as the in my mind, um, if you ask it, let's just say, let's just say it was going to be two thousand per member over the uh i'll just say uh 20 months a hundred dollars extra a month right so you could do it that way but the reality is and frankly probably next year we'll need to ask for a capital dues increase so like it i mean if you're a member i i, I don't know my feeling is that you'd almost be better keeping them separate because then they're like, well, wait a second, you're telling me I have to do this. And then you're saying that you're also increasing it from 150 to 175 in perpetuity, right? Yes. And so, you know what I mean? As opposed to, I mean, you could, I could, I could probably argue both sides myself, like to say, what, which is the more um, palatable way to do it? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. One way is you treat it like a bond, you you know, bonds for a date. In this case, it's a loan to pay off a piece of land. And then at some point it goes away. It's more clear that there's a kind of a timeline, which is one consideration. People understand what yeah. we bought for and what it pays for. Otherwise, if it goes into general capital assessments, uh, like government, you never, you never get a refund on your, you know, taxes. We are going to get a refund, yeah. Gary. We're going to talk about that. Not your property taxes. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the thoughts is we can just finance it. And then that loan payment is taken out of our capital funds for future projects. So we're not in a position where we can't afford the loan and the loan payments. We would just have to consider that it takes away funds from other things, you know? Okay. So it's just how we want to market it, I guess, to the membership, yeah. you know. 
Um, I don't know what reserve said he, oh, that's just our, okay. So this is just where Zach puts in his numbers. Oh, okay. Manual entry. <laughs> <clears throat> but essentially this is, this is just the, for, straight from the asset schedule. Yep, it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting that he has to just type it in there, but I guess they're working on that. Okay. Um, aspirational. So we'll see that, I guess, when um, we start adding in those numbers with different scenarios. Okay. And then additional sources, I would say this would be donations, um, COVID potential. We could put that money in here. I know you asked about that and I would hesitate putting it in the base because okay. who knows? Uh, I like <laughs> you know, point, yeah. No, we've always said, right, as far as yeah, that, if someone, something seems too good, too good to be true, right? As I know. As a matter of fact... As a matter of fact, while we're on this call, I want to acknowledge uh, something about this this uh, COVID tax credit because um, Lori did all of the heavy lifting in terms of the process as far as, but it's actually Sean Butler who called me up and said, hey, you you guys, we, we need to take a look at this at Perry Park. So, yeah. So, Sean, thanks for that initial heads up. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great job. Yeah. In September, they put a hold on him because of so much fraud around the payments. Ours was submitted in August. Don't know how it will stand or, you know, what they'll continue to do, but yeah. Well, I would we definitely- we, We've right, gotten about 60% of our money. Okay, that's We've good. We've gotten. That's good. It, but so that's Sean, good. when you say you've gotten, so I assume, because obviously they, they paid it in installments, so obviously that means you're optimistic about uh, receiving the remaining 40%. Yes, uh, we were very optimistic. As soon as we got the first one, it was like, okay. You're good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good. Um, uh, but I'm with you on the base case, Lori. Maybe in a strategy model. Yeah. Yeah. And a really, really big asterisk by it. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, so actually on that point, because the other thing is for when you when you with a, with regards to your as, asterisks, when I read about this specifically as it related to country clubs, and Lori, I think that guy Larry Hirschberg or something like that may have wrote something about this. Is that it's almost like let's just say if you get X amount, I'll just say five hundred thousand, that <clears throat> there's there's some concern. Frankly, because of the fraud, that you, it may be more subject to audit, right, by the IRS mm -hmm. afterwards. So it's almost like you know, if, if if we were fortunate enough to get it, which I think we will, it might be prudent to almost hold some of it in, in reserve, right? Sure, sure, absolutely. Uh, it's a good thing we have management solutions. You know, it's it's really their it's their tax filing and um yeah all their support i'm sure they would be right there with they us get, if we got audited yeah, yeah they're gonna get their cut of they earn a commission for the work they did though right mm -hmm. they did yeah. it's tiny it's super it's super deserved mm -hmm. well, that's for sure yeah Lori, could you scroll down slightly because i assume this is the yeah. next 10 years uh yes. yep okay yep so that's where the parts <laughs> of do we make decisions to change anything um, there's a whole bunch of charts on here. I don't, yeah, gosh, a lot of charts. Leave it, if you could leave it here for a second. And yeah. so the, so obviously we've elected to sort of keep this stable the entire time. Um, in other words, I mean, obviously you could say, well, you know, we might, if we were to increase the, the membership cap, you could, it could conceivably be higher but it also doesn't account for as far as that, you know, if there's a little bit more of a rough patch or something at some point in, in that it goes down for a couple of years as well, right? Yeah. So we're assuming kind of like a flat for the 10-year mm -hmm. period. Yeah. Okay. I mean, my just so I'll say to the group, my personal opinion is, is that unless the cap number were to go up even uh, by, by some amount, um, it'll be very, very difficult, if not impossible, to close the gap. We are at, re certainly relative to other, other clubs, our cap is so far below 
the what the average is for other clubs that have uh, eighteen only only have eighteen holes. <clears throat> That's just my yeah. two cents, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely something did, for membership you, to review. Did you show the uh, chart that shows um, what it uh, our gap in capital income coming in versus our uh, expenditures that we're expecting? Kind of shows that gap in there. Uh, it's the projection tabloid. <laughs> Which one? Oh, just well, the. Is there a chart for the projection? I don't projection? know. That's I what bet I was there looking is. at. Bear with me as I just kind of click through them. Oh, I guess fine. you're fine. Oh, this is cool though. This shows you how you can once you develop multiple models. This shows shows you how you can quickly flip from model to strategy model to strategy model. Oh, you could. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so then that, there's, Oh, yeah. that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's just the summary one. And I mean, here's your total expenditures and this is your total money coming in, you know? So it, it uh, tells us we are on cash flow. We go negative on mm -hmm. 2031 after yep. this this year so by 2031 yep. we we need to add a essentially nine million dollars to our cash flow between now and 2031 to get over the hurdle yeah plus well, any hey, gary i was just going to say gary that number will be much higher because mm -hmm. uh, keep in mind that this includes zero aspirational projects Right, but that is just for the obligatory, but it's also uh, inflation adjusted, right? Yes. Yeah. So if we do we have a chart that actually shows this or, or a, a graph that shows this rather than a report? I don't know. Um, uh, ending capital cash balance. Let's see what it is. There you go, Gary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so somehow we have to figure out the solution to get nine million more cash coming in to get over that hurdle. We we uh we could spend a take a hundred thousand dollars and put it on West Saratoga. Perfect. <laughs> uh, Bob Lowe suggested we spend twenty dollars a month on uh, lotteries. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, what else is here? <clears throat> I mean, some so, of them, if we put in variables, will be great, you know, if we see the, but I mean, this snapshot is really good. It sure is. And I think that's really where we one, should focus on. Yeah, I know this is kind of fun to think about, but one of the Things that we've said we want to do is get, or one of the guidance is to get our capital dues up to pay for our obligatory and depend on our initiation fees for our aspirational. Is there any way that we can look and see? I know right now we have them combined, but any way to think about, about it in those terms? In this you case, could absolutely, you, could, you could easily do that, Gary. So Lori could play with the number. Going back um, to the uh, uh, the membership assum assumptions, right? And she could play with with that number as far as for the for the years going out, as far as regular increases in the capital dues until that became a flat line, right? Or at least to twenty thirty one. Twenty thirty one, there's going to be there's the uh, you're not going to have the reserve to pay for that. At some point, mm -hmm. at some point, you're going to borrow money, or you're going to assess, or or, or both. Yep. Yeah. So in this yeah. this case, Great. we're kind of seven six hundred and fifty thousand short on capital dues to pay for obligatory, and we've got about four hundred going towards aspirational. If that if we kind of married it up that way. Um, where did you what, come up or is, where did you come up with the 400 K? Uh, the 400 in, in net initiation fee income. 
if this to, should match up well, with our aspiration. Well, I, okay, I'm no. with you. So, so Gary, I like the way <laughs> the the way you just stated it is is in fact what, irrespective of the of their Compass product, just in general, the how uh, Club Benchmarking recommends clubs run. You know what I mean? In other words, the members need to understand that you have to have incoming money to maintain your asset base and 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 and, and replace it. And that's actually, Lori or, or Gary, I think is sort of almost a, a good starting point as far as, you know, um, we don't need to solve it today, but we should at least start to talk about as far as, you know, there's a certain amount, and maybe Mike or Sean, you can comment. The good news is there's a certain amount of the, even the higher priority things that are on the LRP priority list that are already accounted for in the model, right? So as we're looking at, as we get to the, the sort of the strategy portion, because at least just for 20, 24 and Gary, I'll, I'll use your numbers, right? We, <clears throat> I'm gonna, I'm just gonna use, if we use 400K on aspirational items, right? It just means that we have a, uh, a gap, right, Lori, of uh, minus 300. Yeah. That yeah, we have to means... close. That not only do we have to close, that we have to close this year. In other words, but keep in mind, we can close it by pushing stuff out. I mean, there's all yeah. the different levers, right? Right. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think for scenario one, the only thing we change, we don't change our cap. We don't change our capital dues income. We say of the required projects 1.2 million uh we look at data sheets we look at the list what do you know nate goes to justin do you, are you really going to get this oven this year or however that works out we make sure our, our data sheets act act uh, match up with what we're going to do we see what that new number is taking out the items that we're not going to purchase for equipment if we if we're already at like that 18 percent max from um, capital dollars and then we see what dollar amount is left i think it's going to be different but i also know like i don't know nate tell me if like is the project for the deck pool deck on this 1.2 million it's or not. is that aspirational or it will be aspirational at this point so okay. some of these other like mike just sent me kind of the the mock-up of the lrp um, trending log yesterday. Yeah. And so, I mean, none of those, I mean, I shouldn't say none, but there's a lot of things on here that need to be added to that aspirational line. Okay. Um, so, I mean, okay. rough ballpark, you're looking at a little over $600,000 in aspirational um, on that list. A so, year? For this um, year. Current. Yeah. Seems like a lot of, oh, uh, I, I would think also, in, if we're thinking of base <laughs> case, I think we have to assume a escalation of our capital dues or, or uh, increase, mm -hmm. annual increase. We're so but, far behind. Yeah. I would think we would match it up with our um, our uh, members' due uh, or, uh, assumptions. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just don't see any other way. I mean, we've just got this. We've got a big gap. We we need to assume some kind of growth there. I really think it's uh, we got a big gap if our initiation income doesn't come in. Otherwise, I don't really think it is until thirty one. And I think you could ask Jason. Ooh. Do you think those thirty one projects are really going to happen the way they say it? I mean, that's like all new greens, right? And fairways is like a course remodel. Um, so I don't, I don't think that, I think we should really cut it off at 30 and not, I mean, I know we need to plan for that far out, but that's so far out. Um, well, I think we need to consider the 150 and what our comparable clubs pay before we go to that to increase it. Um, cause I think we're pretty high. We are. So last, so we are, um, 
for our pure clubs, again, this was from, you know, and, and by the way, we should have, I can go back and look as we should have uh, updated data now in, in, uh, for 2023 in club benchmarking. I will tell you this last year for our pure clubs, we were in the 85th percentile in terms of what we yeah. charge for capital dues. Yeah. 80 yeah, so percent. 80, 80, yeah, somewhere around 80, Gary. Yeah. In, in, in other words, in other words, obviously, uh, only only twenty percent of clubs charge the same or more than we did. Mm -hmm. Well, you may we may even if we took, we may want to look at that nine million. But even if it's half that, uh, yeah. that's you know if we're going to wait three years to start or four years to start burden, building a surplus capital, um, it's going to be a big mountain to get over. So somehow yeah. we have to get confidence in the eight may nine million or a reduced number and then we need to be as soon as possible thinking about how we start building that reserve to get over that mountain well well so the one thing like i, I guess that i want to continue to emphasize that should in my mind totally be built into the first strategy model um and laurie so as far as is that yeah I, I honestly think we've talked about this. I think we're all, all in agreement. Mike, I'd, I'll ask you to comment, please, as far as that. We have to put a placeholder in, the, in there for aspirational in 2024 because that shows you what our that shows you what our true gap is just for this year. We are not positive. We're negative. Yeah. And I, and I want to emphasize that. And, and I agree with that. And by the way, Looking at the trending log that we're working off of, I think the aspirational projects is more in the three hundred and twelve thousand dollar range, Nate. I think yeah. a lot of the projects on that list are obligatory projects, and so it's just just a point. So we need to determine what how much we want to spend this year in aspirational projects. I don't think it's six hundred. I think it's more like three to 400 at the most. Yeah. And Mike, you made a good point as far as, and Nate, we talked briefly about this as far as I'm not sure who the best person to do this would be as, as far as we do need, Mike, to your point, we need to make sure on our uh, LRP priority or tracking log, as you call it, that we are indicating whether or not it's, uh, it's uh, that is built into the obligatory items or not because what we want we want to make sure we don't double count right and kind of getting back to what laurie said earlier too that would almost require a full course shutdown in 2031 you're looking at irrigation greens tea boxes i don't think that's going to be the way it plays out and then talking with jason too it's something that's going to be piecemeal together and if we start to see those numbers 312,000 and 26 528 and 27 we can start knocking a few of these items off the list slowly but surely and not have to rip the band-aid all in one year so yeah. i think yeah. we can uh plan for that accordingly put that in the first scenario is adjusting that number right. what you think would be reality. yeah yeah besides, I agree besides as, as as much as the uh the members love the 18 green i'm not sure i want to touch any of the other 17 for a while yeah mike yeah. would you Mike, would you think uh, a land purchase, we would want to put a placeholder in that first scenario? Um, how many scenarios are we going to come up with? How many strategies? I don't know. I feel like the first one needs to be just project-based, where we look at what's in the 1.2, remove the leases, remove, you know, add in other stuff on data sheets, add in aspirational, and that's oh. it. And so then another way to fund it would be scenario two, which increases capital dues or initiation fees or things like that, or member count, stuff Larry, like that. Uh, Lori, so the things you're saying made perfect sense after the call or in the next few days, could you just document those recommendations as far as what, yep. as, to, as to what, I mean, honestly, you know the numbers the best, as far as what do you think as far as, because because uh, really we do need to, kind of solve for 2024 in short order. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like if we put any information out to the membership, it would be 
are funding a capital only in the next year or two? And what do these projects really mean to us? Yeah. Um, you know, I will uh, say, Lloyd, what what you just suggested makes perfect sense to me as far as is that take a take a look at the obligatory. You'll be able to take out some of the leases, or we really need to do all of the other ones that are slated in the in the asset schedule for 2024. And then, frankly, once when you back those numbers out, almost you can make it you can make it uh, balance easily because of that. That that'll almost be your number as far as how much you you have to spend on aspirational in, in 2024, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And um, I mean, we can increase our capital dues in 24. Um, so you know, on any vote is how we did it before. So. Um, I think seeing that project outlay is first and then second is funding changes. Hey, Lori, mm -hmm. um, tell me if I'm wrong, but I thought in one of the votes we did in the past years, we no longer need to go to the members for increases in capital dues up to a certain amount. I don't know. Yeah, In our current bylaws, yeah. There's a number in there, 10%, I think. Yep. I know but, that's membership dues, but was that capital also? Uh, I believe oh. it is. I believe it definitely is because oh, that good. was the because that was the problem that capital dues was stuck at sixty five for so long because mm -hmm. it was stuck in the bylaws, and so we, that's why we updated that to give yeah. us that flexibility. Okay, that's I think good. On, on your first scenario, I think it'd be helpful to kind of state what we're trying to accomplish and then what fact what elements we need to adjust but in that I, I would hope that we could look at our obligatory capital and see if we couldn't smooth that out within maybe say a 10 percent range up and down of a say a medium cost across the years trying to try to get that smoothed out is okay. that something that we could do sure yeah. Take, a look, take a look at the projects. And I think the second piece on that is to make sure that this list is complete with our um, aspirational projects that we see in the pipeline. And of course, I may, you know, four years out, we may not have any yet, but, you know, that'll change. But if at least you could include all the projects in here in this database, then that gives us that overall picture. Yeah. I think I like that idea too. I could see maybe looking at the assets in detail after this year for the next five. Um, yes. <laughs> again, it's kind of, it's kind of a lot just to say, Oh, here's 10 years, you know, it's just not going to work out that way. I, I tend to agree with you, except for the 2031. Uh, that's, that's just drives. You know, that just drives us to, if we know that's not going to be that the way we would like to do it, sure it would be great to have Jason's and others' opinions around how you do it and how we spread that out. Yeah. Okay. So that we lower, that's the mountain we have to get over and we have to plan ahead to get over it somehow. So if we can smooth that out, it'd be a lot easier if it was a reality. Yep. Perfect. Jason, maybe you know the answer to this. Would you know what year that Dan's pet project of the bunkers is slated for? <laughs> uh, not off the top of my head, Dan. I do not know. Yeah, but we, we do have that. it built in, right? I, When we initially talked, it was tied in with the irrigation system year. If you're going to go through the, the pain of uh, closing down certain holes at certain times uh, it was looked at originally in that from that standpoint. Okay, thank you. But I'll, I'll look right now and see if I can find it real quick. I have this sheet up so I can try, Jason. Not really sure. Obviously, it's in course. 
did they was it like um general or maintenance or ops oh landscaping probably my screen is so little i can't really sort it we can look that up okay that's fine but i, I didn't need the answer answer right now um, kind, of curious, kind of curious on that is there you know from what we're getting is this what we expected to see it's just kind of meeting there's are we falling short of anything I, that we thought we would see or need gary i'll just say from my per, from my perspective as far as from during the kind of the calls we had one of the webinars Lori and i sat in last year is that, um, <clears throat> and, and I don't know, he, he mentioned one quick thing on the call. I don't know whether Chris has mentioned any more detail. I'll just say overall, Gary, to me, like the picture looks better than I thought it would. Was there anything missing that we were hoping that this model would give us? Well, no, uh, that, that's the other thing I was going to say, particularly now now that i see this and see how the tabs and see how the data flows which also which also shows you how easily you can run the different scenarios and save those um i'll, I'll just say that if you would have that if i if you would have told me a year ago we'd be sitting here today talking with this level of detail i'd say i'd be thrilled Lori, do you agree? Um, yeah, I think it's good that we can see this outlay, um, the money in, money out, and then make make those changes um, to see different different results. You know, um, the asset list is interesting in the details and what they choose and how they look at it. I mean, thirty one is the perfect example of how he came in and looked at something, but it's, it's, that's a little bit more detailed and we have to take more time looking at it to really know what we're doing as the club. And the land is the perfect example of not something they see, but something that maybe we would move forward with, you know? Yeah. Um... So it's like, we still are in control of that asset list well, and I, I think we need nate, to take we have to take the time okay nate, maybe nate maybe you can comment and then actually i'd like to I'd like jason's uh thought as well i mean frankly this was also a lot of work for the directors to obviously they spent time with zach but then when it came back for them to review item by item over over a fairly long period 10 years like like the um and, and and Jason, maybe you could comment as well. Like, I assume you really for like you spent the most time focusing on what their recommendations were for the next three or four. I, I is that fair? Yeah, that's fair, Dan. I and I for sure still need to continue to delve into this, and as we build those scenarios, make make some tweaks. Okay, I think it's really and like I, the first five years, right? Yeah. 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 So Dan, 2031 was when the bunkers were projected. Same with the irrigation system. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I think most of the directors felt the same way. Just looking at a, a snapshot within one to five years and some of it's been asked for, for a few years, but looking at what they're considering their useful life for each of these items are that might've accelerated or prolonged a little bit for some of them, but, um, yeah, I think it was a great exercise to kind of put a critical eye on everything and make sure that we're looking at the same apples to apples comparisons. And Nate, I hope that that it's that it's also fair to say that with some of these and based on the director review, and I'll use Chef the uh, the kitchen as an example, that we can and kitchen equipment specifically, like big important things like an oven or stove or whatever, that we hopefully we can expect less emergencies assuming assuming we follow this as best as we can 
Yeah, I think it is running a little bit hot for 2024, mm -hmm. uh, especially for an oven that it's not breaking down at this point. It is old. It is past its useful life by probably five to 10 years. But is it something that's crippling our operation? No, I think we could still get some more useful life out of it. And as long as we take care of it and we're maintaining it correctly, we could probably defer that to maybe 2025 or 2026. So um, I wanted to make sure Chef was looking at it with that critical eye. He said he was, but I think we're going to get a little bit more critical <laughs> when okay. we get this next go round. What's okay, the well, price tag on that piece? Oh, uh, it's it's around 50, I believe. Okay. Well, well, Nate, that's one of the things I was going to comment on is, is that um, I know zero about kitchen equipment as far as, however, you do read of, of you know, what you read about it, and including some of the stuff I've read in connection on club stuff, is that people rarely buy brand new equipment. No, and, right. And he always yeah, puts in for brand new. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a big market out there, and Mike's kind of touched on that as well, so as we kind of see and forecast these, these items coming available, their replacement value is new. So there can be some fluctuation there with what that number is going to be and what it actually is. So um, I'm keeping my eye open. Um, you never know what might come down the pipeline for a restaurant that goes under and needs to get rid of some, some capital. So I uh, want to be mindful of that as well. Speaking of that, I, I wanted to ask that question as far as so, like Jason, you uh, you made the your review was helpful on some of the assets as far as because you felt that the club benchmarking's estimate of a replacement value was too low. So my question on that is: is Lori that is not, is that something that every time as the directors get get spend more time on this as far as if they think something is off can we update that or, or for every time we do that up or down we uh, need to go to zach gotta go to zach as it sits right now in that spreadsheet okay. we wouldn't want to make changes um you know just like how we either highlighted items on the spreadsheet and went back to him with it or just yep. emailed yep. it out uh we'd have to share those details Maybe okay. that'll change if, if they can get that incorporation synced, you know, um, with this system. But yeah, I kind of now, I mean, I, I, th that kind of makes sense to me as far as that they want to kind of control that sheet because it drives so much. It's, it's, it's such an important part, right? Yeah. And if a club goes in and, you know, messes yeah. it up, it, it sure causes them tons and tons of work. Yeah. I had a question for Mike and Sean um, through the LRP process. So if we look at this for the planning and you're able to put the, divide the projects between the obligatory and the aspirational, and then we've kind of set this and said, okay, we're going to start the new year. How did that process work that, you validate that these numbers are still kind of what the LRP is forecasting. Do you go back to Lori and update the numbers as the projects get better well-defined or as they start getting closer to, um, to AFE status? Or how do we kind of merge the data that you're, you're assessing and when and get it fed into this model so that it's kept updated? Well, it's it's a great question because I was just getting ready to start to talk about the process of how we fill the numbers in for the aspirational side of this these models. I think um, that for, let's talk about 2024, which is gonna be a little bit different than future years. And it's because we got this information so late and um, we're only now at a point of having all the lists from the various committees on their recommendations for projects, which include both obligatory and aspirational. And we're trying to sort through now which ones make it to the top of the list. And we're hoping that for going forward in 25 and beyond, we have these answers by the end of 2024 
for 2025. But for this year, I think what has to happen is the the Compass report tells us how much money is available, you know, along with the cash flow and everything else. We then um, take the information that Compass has and they work with the directors to help prioritize the list and the directors working with their committees then uh, establish the list moving forward and share them with long range planning and long range planning then talk, takes the multiple lists and develops our recommendations for the priority ranking. And then we make recommendations to the board for approval. So it's a it's an ongoing process where Compass and the directors work together. The directors then share with the committees. The committees and the directors make the recommendations for the longer list. Um, LRP then prioritizes from all the longer lists and makes the recommendation to the board. So that's how it goes forward. But in the future, I think we ought to be in a situation where um, by the end of the year, we can already plug in the obligatory yeah. versus the aspirational for most of these. Exactly. I mean, it's the uh, I know, Mike, because I you had mentioned that there was some feedback from a couple of the members as far as, you know, we're perhaps a little slow on the trigger in 24 as far as that. It's like, well, we needed to go through this process and maybe, you know, it always takes a little longer than you'd like for it, it to. But going forward to your point, I mean, I, I really think you know, it's not going to be exact, but we could, we're going to be able to say with a lot of confidence how much money we have for aspirational in 2025. Or how much we want. Or how much you want, right. Because yeah. that, that, then you just, that requires other adjustments. Right. So yeah. one of the things I, Mike, on the obligatories is 1.3 um, in future years, say next year, 886. You envision having that list of obligatory projects within LRP and kind of getting the numbers for each of the projects uh, for those to say, well, that's really what we think the cost is or, you know, is accurate, is not accurate, but somehow getting ownership that this number of 886 matches kind of what you have in the LRP to look at. Well, just understand the process. Oftentimes we're doing budgets based on limited scope definition. Other times we're doing bids based on actual contractors uh, willingness to do the work for a set scope. And because we're trying to plan in advance and most contractors today won't guarantee a number for more than about three weeks, um, it's always going to be volatile. It's always going to be moving. And we're going to try and add as much appropriate contingency for each project as we have going forward. So it's always going to be best guest efforts going along the way until we actually get to the project where we get the bids from the subs. But for the kind of linking together, you're 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 thinking projects that make up that 886 you'll have full transparency in the LRP to see you know if those are actually projects we've been brought to you by committees or by data sheets or if there's something missing in there that they needed to look at and prioritize or reprioritize yeah i think 2024 we'll have that list in the next 30 days i think 2025 we should have it done by the end of 2024 and then in 2026 and go on, it's going to be a bunch of speculation of other projects we want to do that we haven't been able to do so far. Okay. It's just so the so based on sort of where we're at, <clears throat> and Mike just sort of ties it into kind of what you just said is is that you know it's uh it's uh March 29th. Um is it, I, I think it is, but is it reasonable for us to say that we're going to try to lock down our 2024 model by May 1st? Um, I'd like Sean's input on this too. Sean, you got some comments? Um, 
for for this year, Dan? Yes. Uh, so Lori's going to do well. First off, she uh, she's going to detail for us what, as far as what she's proposing to put in, like the first strategy model, too, so we can focus on locking down twenty twenty four, right? Um, and then she'll run that. But so the uh, I would I would just feel more comfortable if we were able, able to get at least that that one completed in the next month. I, I I think we can. I think we can we can start playing with it. I what I what I look here at the club benching benchmark and the whole compass program is is it's a it's a uh, wonderful tool and uh, and guidance um, data. So one thing I haven't been able to do is as frequently as I would like is is do we have access to this so we can look it up anytime or do we have to look at a like an old Excel spreadsheet? Uh, the asset Lori, list is Excel. Um, um, board members have mo some board members have access to Club Benchmark, but I could certainly add you as a read review person. Yeah, a viewer, a viewer, and I and I think one of the one of the things here is that you know we're talking about this in in, in our LRP committee, and you know we can talk about who has access and who's not, but it this is a it, this is something that. The, dir the directors and 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 anyone uh, management probably should be reviewing you know once a week or so or you know or even you know a little bit maybe once every two weeks so it's still fresh uh, all the time and they're constantly looking at it so I think right now I don't think we know how to use this tool as well as we should and and we have to learn how to use this tool to help us going forward and um and right now I don't think we know much because we we haven't worked with this tool yet and we have to learn how to use the tool and and implement it and, and everything we're talking about is is uh, pertinent and, and necessary um but i think i think we need to work with this tool more um you know especially now is it's okay it's 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 uh we're fa past the first quarter but we need to jump into this and start working <laughs> with it and going forward and 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 we need as lrp committee we may may need to um, nudge the, the the various committees saying, hey, you know, you what about this? What 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 do you think about this? Um, so we're not making all the recommendations. So it's it is coming back and forth. And and Jason's a, a big part, and and that you know the manor house kitchen is is a big part of this. And so um, we 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 need time to work with the tool, but we can come up with the dollars and what we what we plan on doing. And it may not be 100% accurate because things are going to change, but we we do need to start putting well, things on paper. Yeah. The the first thing that's going to change is $500,000 in equipment purchase that they have. We know we're not spending that out of capital dollars. Not saying that Jason's not going to get some leases, but out of capital dollars, that's a huge dollar amount because they recognize that Jason needs the equipment. And so do we, right? We've recognized that. Um, but Sean, the access really, other than walking through with Chris and making the changes together, even I'm not making changes in the tool or building new scenarios. So we're all early in the process of they're still owning and walking through it. We have three, four meetings coming up with them. Chris is ready to meet whenever we are ready to meet. So I think when Nate and I will probably take the brunt of the work saying, this is a list for 24. How does it match up with data sheets? How does it match up with what the directors want? What's our aspirational list to add? And then we can go back to Chris and say, build another scenario for us because they're still really the owners of that. I'm not going to go in and create a new scenario. Oh, um, Lori. Oh, Lori. But I'm I think that's you, good. I'm glad, I'm glad you clarified that because I actually had understood at this point not with the asset schedule, we just talked about that, but with this, that uh, not like, for example, like I couldn't make an update or Jan mm -hmm. couldn't, but that you could. Yeah, and I think I can, but I think um, Chris's support is, especially after Nate and I had that call and he was in there and he was making the edits that we were talking about, um, mm -hmm. I think he's going to help us build scenarios. And like I said, he's ready for our next call to say, yeah, we were okay on the base. Let's build scenarios, you know. 
And I'm not saying okay. that I wouldn't own it one day and we could just make scenario 10 if we wanted to, just because. Right, um, right. I'm just saying, I think that that's their obligation to the program. Okay. Well, okay. yeah, particularly early on. Yeah. Uh, that could makes you, perfect sense. Could you show the list of the capital projects that make up that 1.2? Uh, yeah, it's um really big. Um, so it's really hard. So you're looking at column O here, I believe. Yeah, and if I recall, you can't filter, Lori. So it's well, I can. You have to take off the well, just section, whatever. But yeah, so this but just generally as you go down through there. Um, don't, don't go too far. Just Go back up a few where there's a few numbers. Yeah, we would so, anticipate we would anticipate that some of these numbers in 04, like let's stop somewhere there. Yeah. So say like the ongoing projects at thirty thousand that we might have a uh, data sheet for that might come close to that or at least account for that project. And as LRP is kind of going through refurbishing exterior or if that's a capital that we might have some data sheets that kind of represent that those things have been considered by committees and where they're ranking them ranking them but kind of doing that one-on-one -on -one match of the projects and if you come mm -hmm. up with a T laser leveling of the t's as a capital project and say well we really don't have that in the budget we need to get it down to you know the medium of eight hundred thousand. where do we want to move that one to yeah but that I would think LRP would be really keen to know exactly what's making up those numbers and to see if those are actually in their databases of what they're looking at. Yeah, and and I'll even go as far as saying it needs to really begin by being in the committees. The committees need to know and understand the numbers because so they're the ones making the recommendation. Sure. LRP. Yeah. Is there, yeah. Is there a way for us to break these off into? Yeah where we think what committee needs to look at which ones without them going through the whole list, but kind of saying, okay, yeah. all right. Well, I think um, I've been thinking about the next steps that I could work on and what the process is. And that's take 24 exported out of this ginormous spreadsheet into our own. And, and then that's where we could label it. Is it a house committee thing or is it not? And I, I think it goes to the house committee. If one, Justin says we want to move it um, or two, it doesn't have a data sheet, right? So we could categorize things that way. We could figure out, is it house? Um, is it Justin? If Justin really wants it this year, do we have a data sheet? If we don't, then we need one. If Justin says we should move it to next year, again, we need to review all those processes with um, the house committee. But that was kind of my first initial thought. There's a lot of information on here. People don't need to see G through L, you know, kind of thing. But um, taking it per committee and taking it, do we have a data sheet? Because we already know then it's their high priority. Where is it on on the raking sheet? Um, and are we moving forward? And if we're not moving forward, the committee needs to know about it um, from Je Justin or whoever that leader is. So that's, that was kind of my thinking of, I wanted to I break down the process and get scenario one created. I think that makes an excellent, uh, you know, those are excellent points. Uh, then if they know that we've got pressure this year, we need to move things down year or two out. At least they know that's the pressure. And the other one that's not clear on here who kind of owns it, what committees need to own it, maybe directors. At, so it doesn't get passed over year to year. Somebody starts forgetting about some of them. So, uh, but I think that's an excellent point. If they don't have a data, if they're not, they don't think they need a data sheet and they need to be recommending moving it. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, but we can't, we can't just keep moving the ones that they don't want to do. <laughs> yeah. You know, because it'll still be deferred. Yeah. So uh, can I just a quick overview LRP is currently working off a, a, a trending log. Mm -hmm. That trending log basically started with uh, a budget, a cash flow for this year for $925,000. Uh, 
um, which came off of the one of the more recent cash flow projections. When, mm -hmm. when we look at the projects we've identified in the current trending log, about 312,000 are projects I would call as aspirational. Um, about 320,000 are projects that are obligatory. You know, things like the whole one in 10 drainage and the dam repairs and the restriping of the parking lot and uh, grounds and greens equipment at the 18%, things like that. And that leaves us about another $300,000 not yet dedicated. So it's a kind of interesting right now that it's a third, a third, a third. And that's what we need to do if we're going to target on May 1st, get these things um, kind of finalized going forward. But even within that, we take the... Um, the obligatory, and right now we've got a placeholder that says $50,000 for kitchen equipment and furnishings, of which we now need that committee to tell us where the top $50,000 is for them. And we have $100,000 obligatory for course improvements. And Jason and Grounds and Greens need to tell us where that $100,000 is going to be spent. Now, that doesn't mean kitchen only gets 50 and grounds and greens only gets 100 because we still have $300,000 left of projects that can be done. So there's more than that. But we, so we're trying to zero in on all those costs and all those projects. And I think by about the 1st of May, we can be fairly close with a lot of this stuff. Does that make any sense? Yep. Yeah, I <clears throat> I like Lori. Lori, I like that idea of you all exporting it. For one thing, that this this workbook, this asset workbook, is so unwieldy. Uh, number one, but it's so that if you're able to export to 2024 and start designating those those things, um, uh, because I do think you know I pointed out uh, you know uh, a few weeks ago as far as that understandably, and it's exactly one of the reasons we're doing this is is that there's certainly 2024 items, a fair number of them, that we do not have data sheets for. Could you go back to the display that you had on the um, uh, the spreadsheet from the uh, tool? Um, back to the club benchmark? Is that what uh -huh. you want? Okay. I think with that, if you go back that sheet, I think what it shows us is that our projected 986 is our best case scenario. We need to get those aspirational capital has to be some some percentage of that, less than that. So in my mind, we have to come back and say that between that and aspirational, we've got to get that number down below, say, Ten percent, nine nine hundred thousand this year. We got to get we got to get those projects moved out of two thousand twenty four to be less than the nine eighty six of some percentage. So, to me, we got to figure out how to get those get those out of there to start with because uh, they they can't they can't add up to the one point two. We just don't have it. So, right, and they're not going to. I mean, we're going to move. Probably yeah. 350K out of equipment. I just, um, yeah, we just need to have the time to get get to it, you know. Yeah. And, we, and it's out. not just a percentage or a number move. We need to get the projects that align with that and the equipment that aligns with that. And yeah, right. Yeah. Good. It's a great looking tool, right? Great place to start with having good data. Okay. It would be helpful to get that list story for the 2024. I mean, I'm going to work on it to have it done in the next couple of weeks. Okay. That's what I'll awesome. say. I mean, I'm going to um, do some initial stuff and then I'll talk with Nate on um, making sure I have the right like priority logs and things like that. And then Nate and I should review it and then talk about what conversations we have to have or whatever is happening. But we will collaborate on it. 
Um, so Lori, the and I realize that in between you and you and Nate might be doing some stuff with Chris that I don't mm -hmm. think requires all of us. Um, but can we shoot for having, say, uh, another call in two weeks just to sort of get it updated? Hopefully, the, you know, you talked you talked about some great things as far as not only the export, but also I, I, I really like the idea of you talked about, um, you know, running some proposed scenarios so that we can begin to lock in on a number for 2024. Yep. Yep, I think that sounds good. So an internal call in two weeks and then we don't really need anything from Chris right now. Uh, well, actually, or based on what you said- a call you and, to Chris in two weeks. No, 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 you and Nate might have a call Oh, with okay. Chris, it, within mm -hmm. the next two weeks, but a call just with our committee, just with, with our committee in yeah. two weeks. Yeah, I don't really think I need to talk to Chris right now, um, other than telling him this is what I think we're going to do leading up for scenario one. But oh, I feel okay. pretty, yeah. I feel pretty I good with what we have. But I think a committee call in two weeks seems fine. Okay. I don't know if they agree. Yeah, I was just a little unclear as far as the uh, the. Um, uh, I'd like for the committee in two weeks to be able to look at a couple of scenarios that you've worked up with or without Chris. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. So yeah, really that's we'll what I'd like that. to have on the, in, in the, the call in two weeks based on there's a, a lot, a lot to learn sort of in that period. That number is not going to be perfect certainly, but it'll, you know, it'll get us pointed in the right direction to nail it down. Uh, okay. With, hopefully within the two weeks after that. Okay. I don't know what my availability is going to be in two weeks. I know they don't allow oh, yeah. cell phones on Augusta National. Yeah. So we'll have to uh, figure that out. Yeah. So well, give those tickets away to somebody who's camping. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a shame, isn't it? <laughs> Let's plan on a week, meeting then the week of the 16th because that helps too. I mean, it is the first of the month, um, financials, all that. So 17th, yeah, yeah. 18th, or 19th, if we could. Pick sure. one of those days after the board meeting. That'd be great. It'd be perfect. And we're playing golf by then. We got to have a different schedule. Mm, true. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll put something out. out. I'll put something out. Then, Lori, maybe if, as I said, if you could just sort of document for us in the next couple I of will. days what, what, what you're going to put in the scenarios. Okay. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. That Thanks, will. everyone. Any any other points or questions? No. What do you want me to do with the recording? Um, I think I, maybe, I don't know. Maybe just send the link to Jan if you don't mind. Okay, or I guess I could re reply all to your um, email and then Lucy, sure, if that, you want to watch the first part of that as well, it looks like you kind of hopped on around ten yeah, o'clock. So um, if you're interested, we can send that to everybody. Yeah, that works for me. Mike, you want to stand for a quick second? We'll talk about Dave. You bet. All right. Okay. Okay. I'm going to stop recording. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Thank